Hello everybody, my name's Sam. Welcome to my channel, Frugalissima, where I talk about all things sewing. Today I've got a little bit of an acquisitions video for you. First of all, I'd like to say welcome to anybody who's new and to anybody who has uh, returned. Thank you very much. If you'd like to see more videos like this where I talk about uh, dressmaking, I do reviews and then I've got a series of 100 days of sewing where I do hints and tips for people who are new to sewing and also uh, sewing on a, a budget. If you'd like to see more videos like this, if you could click the subscription button uh, and the notification bell, it will notify you when I'm making new videos. Uh, so on to today's video. So I shall start with uh, some fabric that Minerva has sent me. I occasionally blog for Minerva fabric and they send me fabric in return for a blog post. So we'll get that one out of the way because that's, that's the only one that I've had given. I need to be quite transparent that this is fabric that I've had given but everything else I've, I've actually bought. Uh, so I'm going to start with this one. This is a Lady McElroy Lena or Lena, Lena crepe. So it's a microfiber. It's got navy blue background. I think you can just about tell that's navy blue and not black. Uh, with all these sort of like a cobalt blue, pink, uh, you've got like an aqua blue there and then just um, touches of like a old gold and green going through it and, and flecks of red. And the lighter colour is more of a, a cream than it is a white. And there's your little chaffinch there. Uh, cute little chap. It was described as a medium weight online but if I just hold it up like this I'm going to stick my neck out and say that's not medium weight that's very lightweight. Uh, so when I when I ordered this I ordered two meters of it with a view to make a dress with it. Hopefully you can see here how, how sort of floaty it is. I think really to make a dress out of this although the colors and the pattern are very autumnal sort of winter winter dress I think it would be far too staticky and clingy to obviously be wearing tights and so, things like that. So I think it's going to have to be a blouse. And if you've watched any of my previous previous videos, I've been working on the work from home uh, module that Whitney from Tomcat Sit Stitch Rate has been holding. And um, I think the chaffinch bow, bow would go quite nice with the, um, with the Ariel that I've made for that. And also the trousers as well. So, uh, a blouse it's going to be I think and I think it's possibly going to be a sew over it pussy bow blouse although I did see Alex Judge make a, a Josie blouse from Experimental Space um, which I think it would look really nice in this as well but it's got um, a, a pleat detail on the sleeve I'm not so sure whether that detail might get lost in the sleeves uh, and I think it might be a little bit too poofy which is a problem that I've been having with the work from home module in that these this skirt and these trousers are quite high-waisted. So I've been experimenting a little bit with uh, what would go with it. I've made a pussy bow blouse and a Asta shirt from Seamwork and it'd probably be one of those I think. So yeah that is a that's the first time I've seen McElroy fabric that hasn't been in their kind of cotton lawns. I've never seen it. It was described as a, a microfiber crepe. When I was ordering it, I was thinking more crepe than microfiber. Uh, and like I say, it was advertised as a medium weight one. Um, but to me, it's much more lightweight. It's much more blouse weight than it is uh, either skirt or um, dress weight. And I think it will cling to tights and what have you. Um, so I think that's going to definitely have to be a blouse. That's the one, the only fabric that I've had given. The rest of it I've bought. Uh, I've had a birthday uh, last Sunday, uh, was given some money. So I had a little trip to Fabworks and I'll show you what I, what I bought. But first of all, I'll show you the bag that I got. So the bag is this. It says I have not been to Fabworks. There is not more fabric in this bag. <laughs> And I'll insert a picture of my uh, my little dog, so you can see it there. It's got the so they had about half a dozen designs, different designs uh, on those, and I thought I'd just treat myself. I don't. I mean, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know I make plenty of Mars bags, uh, but this is it's got a, a gusset on it, so it's it's nice and big and roomy. 
Uh, so I'm quite pleased. I'm quite pleased to get that. And they had a, I didn't know at the time, but they had a little deal on with it. Um, if you, it was ten pound for that bag, but they gave you a little card uh, to be stamped, and every time you pay, spent over twenty five pounds in store. Uh, it got stamped and with four stamps you got your £10 back so I've got to spend £100 to get my £10 back but <laughs> I think it's doable for me in Fabworks to be fair. So whilst I was in Fabworks I, as soon as I walked through the entrance um, I spotted this cotton viscose which is like um, a jacquard and it, when you feel it it doesn't feel like a cotton viscose and I've had this fabric from them before uh, in a navy blue unsurprisingly um, and it's been less shiny it's been a, a matte finish but this is quite a silky finish and it's different on it's slightly different on on the other side so obviously the jacquard's in the weave and you've got your if you can see there Hopefully you can see it there that each side is slightly different. So where it's shiny on one side, it's dull on the other side. Uh, so it's kind of in reverse. So number one, I'm going to have to be really careful when I'm cutting it and making sure I get it the right way around. Uh, but number two, it gives me the opportunity to play about a little bit, I think, with the, the front and the back. And I bought this specifically to make the Desi skirt. as Desi, Desi, D-E-Z-I from Seam Work which is a skirt that's cut on the bias and you can see this has got lots of fluidity in it it's going to be it's going to be nice cut on the bias I'll insert a picture of uh, the Desi and you can see that the model um, not only is she only 50 which we, we like uh, the model wearing it is she wears one very similar in similar colour now this probably again isn't my colour against my face but as a skirt I think it's absolutely fine and it's just pushing my boundaries a little bit um, with colours and this is a complete fluke <laughs> but I think these two will go together quite nicely anyway as well you've got little bits of burnt orange in there that that will go together quite well I bought uh, two meters of this the clever thing about the Desi that although it's it's just like an A-line skirt essentially but it's cut on the bias uh, which will give a really nice swish and swish to the skirt uh, but the top and the bottom is in two halves and they've done that so you can get it out of less fabric which I think is a really clever and considerate um, bit of drafting really. Um, it's been on my to-do list for a long time but I've not been able to find the right fabric. So I didn't really want something too out there with it, um, I just wanted something plain but with a bit of difference. It's going to have a nod to the leopard print trend without it being too in your face uh, for my for my style and my my liking shall we say. So also in Fabworks whilst I was there I couldn't resist a rummage through the remnant bin and um, they now have all their remnants in plastic bags so you can't actually rummage through it but this, it's all priced up and everything and I picked up this moleskin navy blue again I'm so so predictable so it's just a meter of it uh, and that was just three pounds and I thought I picked that up actually for bag, bag making but <laughs> once I got it out I thought actually that would make a nice um, shorter Ariel skirt to winter skirt with some nice smart maybe gold buttons going down the side so watch this space on that one I'm, I'm not 100% decided um, I'm sure I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get the mini version of the Ariel out of that and again they look absolutely stunning together um, but obviously this is bottom weight and this would be uh, if I can squeeze out a, a top out of this as well as the skirt as well as the desi skirt um, maybe just like um, a little Chelsea raglan or something like that so I could wear the skirt this, this um, desi skirt together and wear it as separates as well but I think they're stunning together um, and obviously I've got tons of navy as well so we'll see, we'll see how much I can get out of that um, cotton viscose. Bit of a boring one, but it's just a plain white and it's called um, Do Everything Flat With Cotton. So it's just 100% cotton. Uh, and this is more of a creamy white than it is a white white, which is probably better for me anyway. And I'm going to make a Saraste shirt out of this from the named uh, Breaking the Pattern book. 
Uh, somebody suggested that it might go well with the high-waisted trousers that I've made previously. Don't think it would go with the Ariel. It might go with the Ariel, I'm not sure. I think it was Sarah um, that suggested it. And I, this has been on my to-do list for a long time, actually. Um, so that's the Seraste. Um, and I've actually made a version of the Seraste top, which is ironically in this <laughs> burnt orange. If you look at how that's fitted there, when I made my version, this was really quite um, loose and unfitted. And that burnt orange would look really nice in it, actually, <laughs> but we'll see. I've, I've, I've been intended make, intending to make that shirt for a long time, but if you look at that picture, I'm going to have to lengthen those sleeves, I think, because that is something that I forget to do. So if I'm telling you now, I might, it might remind me. But it, it needs, I think it needs a plain fabric because you, it's, it's broken up. I'll show you the line drawings. It's in quite a few, a number of parts. So you can see there, uh, it's, it's quite broken up and I think it, it'd be a shame to, to break up a print. And this cotton, is, it was only five pound a metre. So I got a metre and a half of that, which will be plenty, I think, to, to make that shirt. And my next purchase from Fabworks is uh, this organic cotton, which probably is bleaching out. Uh, they sell, they have quite a lot of organic cottons in there. And this is not white. <laughs> it's a very pale blue, and I th you probably see it better actually. When I was buying this, I was thinking I was buying white, but pale blue is actually absolutely fine. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, I talked about previously that I wanted to um, take the plantain and use the neckline of it of it but then get something a little bit more fitted so that's the intention with this so that again we can go back to the work from home module and i'll have something to wear with my navy blue trousers which i've sh just shown you the high-waisted ones and the pale blue should go with the yellow that and uh, i've made a denim ariel as well although it's six pound a meter um which isn't expensive for a for an organic cotton jersey. It's nearly two meters wide. Is this? Um, it's quite it's quite wide. It's not. It's more than 150. It's not quite two meters. So it's not that for six pound a meter. I don't think. Then finally from from Fabworks, another one from the remnant bin it was this absolutely beautiful wool. Uh, again, this was in a, a bag, all sealed up. And I couldn't feel it until I bought it. So these are absolutely 100% my colours, but it's a, a woolly wool, shall we say. So there's just over a metre of this. And I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to make with it because I wouldn't be able to wear this as a jumper. It is a really, really woolly wool. <laughs> woolly wool. It'd make, it'd make anybody itch, I think. So it could just be cut into scarves or a nice big cowl or something like that. And that was £4.50. It's 100% wool. And it's just, I love the colours in this. Um, or I could make some sort of, um, I could try and make some sort of cardigan out of it, but I'd have to wear something underneath it. And a meat is not, it's not a great deal for making a cardigan, really. So the last fabric I've got to show you, I showed it briefly in my previous in my previous um, video when I was talking about the work from home wardrobe. Is this cabled denim cloak, clock, cloak, um, and that's from my fabrics. I got a meter and a half of this, and that cost me I think it was twenty about twenty one pounds, including the discount, and that's going to go perfectly with the work from home. Um, module. I just need to get it so time to sew it up. I'm going for some sort of long line cardigan I think. I have seen uh, something like the Blackwood. I made the one from the Peppermint magazine that could do it and the one that I made from the Peppermint magazine which is a free one I've worn lots and lots but it's got a band all the way around it and I don't I, I don't know how that would work with this sort of cabling. So it's kind of, it's it's playing on the that side and cabled at that side. I could play about with the other side, but it's it's a bit sort of polyestery, shiny. And yeah, the my, my fabrics is a fairly new fabric shop to me. I've never used them before. I think they're in Europe somewhere, 
good service, they, it came really quickly. So I'm quite pleased with that. So that's what I've got planned with that one. So that's how I spent some of my birthday money. I've still got a little bit more to spend, so if I see any more sales coming up, then I will, I will do that, or I might treat myself to that Josie pattern. I haven't decided yet. Um, talking about patterns, I mentioned in one of my previous uh, videos that I don't mind actually sticking patterns together, but I have found that for some of the patterns that I've bought, such as a Sienna maker's jacket, um, that there's so so many um, pieces pages to stick together that it was it was becoming a little bit of a sticking point. And Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door had mentioned in one of her videos about Plan Twenty Four uh, and how good the service was and uh, how cheap they were. So I thought I'd have a little bit of an investigate, and I got the Sienna Maker jacket printed. They charge you 75 pence a sheet, which is, I think, is pretty reasonable. There's a minimum postage fee of five pounds, so you may as well get as many printed as you possibly can, because obviously, if you, if, once you spent your fiver, you might as well get your money's worth. Now, that's the Anna Maker's jacket. Um, I think it ended up being five sheets, so it's, you know, three pounds, 75 or something like that just to have it have it all printed and I think it's worth it really because they're, they're AO sized and the Desi um, skirt that I mentioned previously that was actually three sheets because it's cut on the bias it's actually it's it works out quite a lot so this is my little bundle of um, printing minus the Desi and uh, the Asta I've had the Asta um, cut up as well. I think I had eight uh, patterns printed and like I say the Sienna was five sheets itself so eight patterns all together and that cost me about just over £20, £21 and the, the service was really really good. It came within, I think I ordered it on a Wednesday night and it came on the Friday morning so I was really pleased with that and it's, it's just it's got me around a few sticking points actually so I thought I'd just mention those and then Finally, I've just got a couple of acquisitions that I've got uh, as birthday presents. The first one being a bit of a surprise from my mum because my mum bought me this beautiful watch and I was more than happy with that. Um, but she also bought me this little... Can you guess what it is? <laughs> I'd never seen one of these. And it's a four-in-one. Um, it's got a little cutting mat there. This side is a pressing mat, it's actually two. And then if you are a quilter or it's, you like um, quilt, if quilting's your thing, this is so that you can put your designs on and see what they look like, I think. And then there's some sandpaper on that side and that's to stop uh, your fabric from slipping about, I think. So I think it's been designed with quilters in mind um, but really handy if you don't really want to get the ironing board out. You've just got a little bit of a face into it. It's just like that's A3. That's A3 size, more or less. And then your little cutting board's uh, A4 size. And I've got a couple of a little A4 size cutting boards and they are really handy if you don't want to get your big one out. Yeah, I'm quite surprised by my mum getting that because she's not a sewer. <laughs> Bless her. Uh, I think she was. I think she was um, advised by a quilting pal. So that that that'll just show you that. Um, I can't remember. She didn't tell me where it came from, but I suspect maybe Hobbycraft. If I can find the brand of it, I'll put a, a link to it down below. And finally, my pal bought me for my birthday this uh, Threads of Life. Uh, she she knows that I like sort of um, sewing history books, uh, anything to do with sewing at all. And she took a bit of a gamble because it's not one that, that I, I already owned. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading that. And then one little extra purchase that I made myself was uh, Lidl did a craft week. I've done a video on um, Aldi's craft week, but I don't think I did one for Lidl's because uh, all I picked up was this wool. I've never seen wool in this shape before, and it's not wool actually, it's um, calling it yarn. <laughs> because it's not wool, because it is 100% acrylic. But it's lovely and soft, and it's just a lovely dusky pink. But I've never, I've never seen it this shape before. 
So I was a bit intrigued. And you've got 200 grams there, 200 grams, 340 metres for ply. And there's, there is actually a free pat, knitting, knitting pattern for that scarf there. So I might do that or I might make myself a little hat with it. I'm not 100% sure. I think there was a yellow and I think there was a cream. I think they were about £3.99. I think that's about right, £3.99 for 200 grams. Um, so it's, it's, I would say it's a bit chunkier than a DK. Um, so it should knit up quite quickly. It takes five millimetre hook, six millimetre needles. I'm not, I'm not the most, world's most experienced of knitters, although I did learn to knit before I could sew, but I'll give that a go. I do have a granddaughter on, it, on her way, so, but I think, I don't think you're supposed to do pink anymore, so we'll see. <laughs> so that's it from me. I will love you and leave you and I will speak to you next week. Leave any comments below, uh, I love talking to you in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, bye!